Hey divers, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Now this is kind of interesting. I, I don't know how many of you would even know this, even my vintage collector friends. But I, I, we did a recent episode, didn't we, Kevin, about comic books. And there were lots and lots of comic books. I mean, we're not talking five or six, we're talking dozens, if not almost hundreds, of comic books uh, about scuba diving, about underwater. Now some of them were military, frogmen and so on, but they were all about underwater. Some of them are about recreational diving. I mean, Sea Hunt's a fine example, but there are many, many more around the world under the sea. And the Aquanuts, and Frogmen, and Frogmen, Undersea Agent, and on and on and on. These uh, comic book series went on. Most of them from the 50s and 60s. Very, very popular back then. Not comic books were very popular, uh, but also uh, uh, undersea scuba diving. And all the adventures that divers had, whether they were military or commercial or recreational divers, spear fishermen, no matter what they were doing now, treasure seekers, big deal. Uh, the comic books were very, very popular. But uh, at the same time, as interesting, I, this isn't done today, but at the same time, there were other uh, uh, books, storybooks essentially, uh, sort of a combination of storybook and a technical manual <laughs> uh, that, that were published as well. Published by different companies. There weren't, there weren't comic book companies. One that I have here is from uh, Classics Illustrated, which some people would call a comic book company. Um, I'm loath to say that because I loved the Classics Illustrated, and they were all classics, true stories, you know, Ivanhoe and, and R Romeo and Juliet and more, maybe more exciting ones than that, but there are lots of them. 169, as I recall, but anyway, uh, but, there, uh, but, but these, these, were, these were books that would come out once in a while. So maybe every year or twice a year, every couple of three years, you'd go into your local bookstore or, or into the comic shop, you know, a variety store where these were sold, and you would see on the, uh, on the counter, on display, a, a book about, uh, about diving, yeah, undersea adventures. Now, it's interesting because as I've explained to you, in textbooks and in movies and in comic books and other, other uh, uh, interesting aspects about the underwater life that was uh, popular in the 50s and 60s, uh, these books all had common themes. I told you about the movie posters in particular because they came from Hollywood. So, they, of course, they had to have a scuba diver, uh, almost invariably in uh, double hose equipment because it's cool, uh, Rob. And also, uh, they always very had a great big knife, yeah? and uh, and there had to be a shark, or maybe a barracuda, or or a, a, a moray eel, or a giant octopus is about to devour the diver, and uh, and they also very had to have a, a pretty girl. Those were the essentials that pretty much guaranteed that people would go and see that movie. And to some extent, that, that went uh, on with the uh, comic book covers as well. And then these adventure books. I like to call them adventure books. I don't like to call them comic books. They're very similar, but they're different. And uh, so you can see on this particular one called Undersea Adventures, which came out in, uh, I think this one came out in 50, no, 61, 1961 roughly. Kevin will tell you in a second. This is a very, very thick book. It actually has a, a thick spine on it, probably uh, at least twice as thick as a regular uh, comic book, and called Undersea Adventures. The World Around Us. It's, I think this is a series of books called The World Around Us. And this particular issue was called Undersea Adventures. And there you can see the scuba diver with his uh, double tanks and his uh, two hose regulator and aqua lung DA, as I can see. Uh, anyway, and of course he's got his uh, spear gun. This guy's got a spear gun. And the other fellow there, you can see that, Kevin. I don't know if you can get in closer. You can see the other guy's got his 14 inch knife. He must be an advanced diver. Uh, a novice diver's got an 8 inch knife. Experienced divers had a 12-inch knife. You had to have a 12-inch knife to be a real diver. And uh, pro divers got a 14-inch knife. I think, I think his was at least 14 inches, isn't it, Kevin, from Alexa? <laughs> yeah. And, of course, the big shark. Had to be a shark there, yeah. Uh, this is the good old days when sharks didn't attack people the way they do today, but we still had to have a shark in there. So what were these books? Well, they were just a lot of fun. Just a lot of fun. Now, this particular one, I'm going to show you some of these stuff on the inside. This particular one uses a, it looks, it looks like comic book, Photography. Actually, it's art. This is not photography, but uh, this is about uh, undersea adventures, and it talks about various things that scuba divers do, uh, whether they should do or, or, or not do is uh, open to a discussion. But you see spear fishermen here, and there's usually a story involved. Usually somebody uh, needs something done or gets into trouble or is looking for treasure. 
And uh, this has several stories in it. So it goes on for a little while. And then in here, right in the middle here, it's got a little bit of some history of underwater exploration. I've gone a little bit farther. Sea monsters, false and true. <laughs> you see? So it's not a comic book. It's, a, it's an adventure and educational. There's a good, a good word. Because there, there's a lot of stuff in here to learn that you wouldn't learn a whole lot in a comic book. As much as I may love uh, Sea Hunt and uh, the Sea Hunt comics, I had to be honest. Uh, you, you don't actually learn very much. Sunken treasure. There's a, a section on sunken treasure. Talks about you know where it came from. And it has pictures actually of some of the uh, uh, some of the early uh, ships that sank and so on. There's a section on sunken treasure. Uh, skin diving. Now there's a, a, a four or five page section of the bill called skin diving. And it actually shows the equipment that skin divers use, mass snorkel, fins, stuff like that. Some of the techniques is in there, some of the things you might see while skin diving. And, and it's pretty neat. And then there's a little story about a skin diver, and he helps the local police department find some evidence of a crime underwater, and it's pretty neat. And, uh, and so on it goes. And they, they have a submarine. There's a story about a submarine, which is involves some some divers as well uh, and, and uh, there we are there's a, there's your military uh, part where there's some uh, marines there some GIs or marines uh, working and it ends uh, with a typical like a comic this is the one that was put out by classics illustrated Kevin you can see it there typical and some advertising on it as well but this was a this was just a, a very very popular book much bigger than a comic book a lot more information this this wasn't a uh, a 10 minute read. You know, you could spend an hour or two reading through this book and enjoying it very much. And they don't make books like this anymore today. I have a couple more here to show you as well. Okay, so here's, a, here's another one of these uh, adventure books. It's interesting, the, the title on both of these books uses the word adventure. <laughs> so that was Undersea Adventures. This one is Underwater Adventures. I have a different name. And there again, just the front cover. Once again, Kevin, take a look. There you see the front cover with the diver. And uh, that is, uh, there's the classic front cover. Diver and big single tank this time, red trunks. Always put on red trunks so something stood out, I guess. And uh, I think he's just an experienced diver. I think that knife's only 12 inches long, and, uh, whatever. And, of course, the shark. Uh, I notice it's kind of interesting that that particular shark is swimming away from the diver, but he's going to stab it. Now it looks like, hey, whatever. Really interesting cover. If you saw this, imagine you're 8, 9, 10 years old, walking through the bookstore, walking to the variety store, your mom's picking up, some, picking up some milk and eggs, and you're looking at the comics, you know, Superman, the first one, Super Dog, Superwoman, all that kind of stuff. It's coming out, and you walk on, <gasps> and you see this. Uh, you see this, guess what? What's the next thing you say? Mom! <laughs> Absolutely. You, 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 how could you resist this if you're going? And what, this one's entirely different from that first one. This one actually does use uh, photography. Now, there's a reason for that. First of all, while photography was in its infancy, it was actually getting pretty good. This one came out in 59 or 60, 61, something around there. Uh, it, 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 there still was underwater photography. And, uh, and in order to add authenticity to a book about underwater, if you put in some actual underwater photographs, it made it, oh, wow, that's, that's a real underwater book. You see, there were lots of books that were written, and they had page after page after page of information with line diagrams. I'm thinking of Joe Strakowski his famous manual called Diving for Fun, you've seen it. And uh, all kinds of interesting, and every once in a while there'd be a, a, a black and white photograph, a full page photograph from underwater. Oh yeah, it really made uh, Joe Strakowski's book, and I, I think that came out in 59 or 60. It really made his book really authentic because he had actual underwater photographs. Wow. <laughs> but this book is a little bit different because uh, it has a lot of underwater photographs. And the reason I was going to say is because this was written by a very, very well-known diver, Bill Barada. Bill Barada, long gone, unfortunately, a wonderful man, and extremely well, uh, very experienced, very well-known. Uh, and he, he basically at that particular time was, I feel like, the reigning expert on uh, diving, certainly on diver education. So much so he wrote several books. This is just one book that he put together. Uh, he wrote several books on scuba diving. I have a feeling that this particular book is a compilation of several of his books, maybe in condensed form, all put into one little manual here. Uh, interesting enough, Bill Barada uh, uh, worked with Lloyd Bridges in Sea Hunt. Yeah, he he uh, actually taught uh, Lloyd how to scuba dive uh, a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> not, scuba diving is not that difficult. Lloyd was pretty good in the water anyway. And uh, he actually worked with Lloyd Bridges on a couple of uh, projects. Uh, they wrote a book together called uh, 
um, flippers, fin and flippers, mask and flippers. And the record. Yes, and they also did a record. Yes, an LP. Remember what? Remember records? You guys, yeah, you guys do. You're old. Uh, records. Remember the big round platter uh, and finals, 33 and a third RPM. And uh, there was actually uh, learn how to skin dive. It was the name of it, and it was a learn how to kind of like the internet today. You can go and learn how to fix windows or fix your iPhone. You know, basically burn it and get a new one. But anyway, uh, uh, so Bill Barada is well known at the time. He wrote, he wrote the, or compiled anyway this particular one. And this one is kind of neat because as you can see in this very front cover, very front page here, there's a quite a long list. Uh, on this index page, if you like, and there's a picture, I don't know who that is, of a diver. There's quite a long index page of things in this book. So you could go to this book and, and you could find uh, the world below. Uh, denizens of the deep. Yeah, marine animals. Yeah, whatever. Underwater hunting, uh, spearfishing. Big deal back then. That was really where the sport started. Uh, you always see a, 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 a skin diver, a scuba diver, always had a spear gun. Um, competitive diving. Competitive diving. What the heck would that be? Well, that could be a lot of things. Could be spearfishing, could be octopus wrestling, uh, a lot of different things. Underwater profile, um, uh, sunken treasure, you know, finding treasure, even if the treasure was simply artifacts from shipwrecks as opposed to gold and silver and uh, so on. Even artifacts were considered treasure. And underwater treasure seeking was a big deal back then. Things have changed a lot, huh? Uh, whatever. Skin diving scientists. So this is a chapter in here that's about scientists who are skin divers, and, and they use their skin diving skills in their scientific work. We would call them marine biologists probably today. Uh, search and rescue work, search and rescue, search and recovery, photography, and uh, thrill seekers. That's got to be a good chapter. Anyway, let's take a real quick look here. So the world below, pretty straightforward, <clears throat> talks about underwater. There's that good-looking girl in a black wetsuit. I'm just going to quickly skip over some of these, Kevin. In no way you'll be able to to uh, zoom in on all of them. Let me just find a couple of them. Oh, there's, there's an interesting one there <clears throat> because this, this particular diver is using that Voigt Portisub. And this is a Voigt Portisub as opposed to the earlier version of the Portisub made by the original company, uh, McNeil and Hardesty, because it says Voigt Portisub right on it. So this is obviously is in the 60s, early 60s. Very, very dear friend of mine, Sam, lives in California today, and an elderly gentleman now, but an avid, avid diver, an expert on, uh, on many aspects of diving, used to uh, uh, go on and go spearfishing with some of the big names in spearfishing. These guys would bring out four, five, six hundred pound groupers. Yeah, yeah. Not all that hard to kill. Uh, 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 the hard part is getting the darn thing on, on into a boat. <laughs> At the very back, I think there was a section on, uh, what was in there a section on? Thrill seekers. Thrill seekers, yeah. So there's a guy in a cave, which is very popular today. Cave diving is very, very popular today. It requires just some very special training. Back then, we just got a flashlight, went into a cave. And uh, thrill seekers, ice diving. I don't know if I'd call ice diving thrill seeking, although it does require some expertise, and there is perhaps uh, some increased risks that have to be acknowledged and prepared for, but eh, it's quite safe. But uh, they call that in the thrill-seeking uh, section, and it's pretty neat. So there's the kind of book that we had back in those days. No ads in this book, which is kind of nice. Bill Brodus books, there's no, no advertisements in this. Pure and simple, fun information for a young diver. Pretty neat. Now here's one more, just last one. The question and answer book of underwater life. Talks about skin diving and all kinds of stuff. It's got a nice picture on the front there of a, of a, of a vintage diver, a double hose diver swimming along. And uh, he's got a, let's see, a net. Looks as if he has a net in his hand. So maybe he's going to be catching some fish for his, uh, for his aquarium. And uh, this is put out by the Golden Press in New York. And uh, basically, <clears throat> this has information on skin diving and scuba diving. And then and then, oh, there's actually a, 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 some color plates. They were called color plates in the middle here with pictures of fish on them. These are not photographs. There was no color photography in the 50s. I can tell you that right now. That didn't happen until the 60s. So color plates in there. And then would, after each of these chapters, there was a submarines, how to clear the mass. You see there's a fellow there 
some, so this was a kind of a training manual and an information manual and a fun manual and stories and everything else. And then uh, towards the end of, of the chapters, <clears throat> let's see if I can find one here. Questions and answers. Questions, anyway. So there'd be, uh, let me just, I can't seem to spot one right here. Oh, fishing and, and everything is in here. Uh, how to make an aquarium, how to collect fish, and so on. And then, and then there'd be uh, some questions, you see. And so you're supposed to answer the, after you've read it, answer these questions. It's almost like, almost like taking a course online today, isn't it, Kevin? Oh, right, there's, there's your skin diving equipment. Mask and fins and snorkels, and you see the snorkels are old, eh? Thin, thin like drinking straws, with lots of bends in them. <laughs> Pop. And then at the very back, of course, uh, were the answers. Answers to the questions. Here we go. Here's the questions right on here. And raising fish in a home aquarium, you don't handle the fish, but whatever. And buying a home aquarium tank, as uh, is, is, uh, one, two types of skin diving are diving with scuba, di diving with air, and diving on a snorkel. So there's, there's the questions and then the back of the answers. So it was kind of an interesting book. It was a fun book, the question and answer book, educational and lots of neat pictures as well. Because you don't see these books anymore. This is definitely from, from uh, the old days. You go into a bookstore today and say, yeah, have you got the latest book on uh, called Underwater Adventures or about uh, skin diving or scuba diving? And we'll catch you. Uh, we have a paddy ma training manual. Uh, is that what you want? No, no, no. I want something adventures, underwater. Oh, you mean like Clive Cussler type of thing? No, you just don't get them anymore. Lots of fun. There are more of these. I have more of these. I just sold three for the day. That's enough. It was a lot of fun back in the 50s and 60s. It's fantastic today. Diving is safe and fun today. But there are things that are missing. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.